Forge welding, also known as fire welding, is a method of solid state welding that bonds two pieces by first heating them to a high temperature and then uniting them through hammering. Alternatively, the process can involve the use of presses or other mechanisms to push the heated metals together, applying sufficient pressure to cause the metals to plastically deform at the point of contact. Despite its complexities, this technique has been employed for metal joining since ancient times and remains a fundamental practice in traditional blacksmithing. Forge welding is noted for its ability to fuse both similar and dissimilar types of metals. However, the rise of electrical and gas welding techniques with the Industrial Revolution has largely superseded manual forge welding, though its automated variant continues to be widely used in industrial manufacturing. Forge welding stands as a traditional method for bonding metals, involving the heating of the materials beyond the specific threshold followed by the application of pressure. This pressure deforms the welded surfaces, establishing a bond at the atomic level. The amount of pressure needed for this varies with the alloy's temperature, strength, and hardness, making forge welding a technique with roots stretching back to ancient times, celebrated as the oldest known welding method. Welding techniques are broadly categorized into fusion and diffusion welding. Fusion welding, common in electric and gas welding, melts the metals at their joining interfaces, requiring temperatures significantly above the metal's melting points. This method often employs a filler metal to prevent the separation of the weld due to its high surface tension. In contrast, the fusion welding joins metals in a solid state without melting, typically resulting in less heat-induced stress due to a more uniform heat distribution. This category includes techniques like cold welding, explosion welding, and notably, forge welding. The journey of metal joining traces back to the Bronze Age, a time when different hardnesses of bronze were fused using a technique known as casting in. This early method involved embedding a solid piece into molten metal within a mold, letting it cool and solidify without melting both components entirely. A practice commonly used in the assembly of sword blades to handles or arrowhead tanks to tips. Additionally, brazing and soldering were also prevalent practices during this era. The evolution of welding took a significant turn with the introduction of iron. Forge welding, recognized as the inaugural welding technique, emerged with the advent of iron smelting from ore, believed to have begun around 1800 BC in regions like Anatolia or Turkey. These early smiths faced limitations in achieving temperatures sufficient to melt iron completely, leading to a process called bloomery. This method yielded a porous aggregation of iron grains known as sponge iron, interwoven with slag and other impurities due to the inability to fully liquefy the material. Post-smelting, this sponge iron was heated beyond welding temperatures and subjected to hammering, expelling air pockets, and melting slag to foster closer contact among iron grains, thus forming a solid mass or billet. Given the small-scale production of iron, constructing large objects necessitated the forge welding of multiple smaller billets. A great example of this came in the assembly of monumental structures like the Iron Pillar of Delhi. Over time, forge welding evolved from a rudimentary trial and error approach to a more sophisticated technique. The ancient challenge of working with metals of inferior quality often led to the development of composite steels. This involved a combination of high carbon steels known for their hardness but brittleness with more malleable, low carbon steels to create materials that boasted enhanced toughness and strength than any single alloy could provide. Pattern welding, a method that surfaced around 700 BC, epitomized this approach. It was predominantly utilized in the crafting of weaponry, such as the famed Damascene, Japanese, and Merovingian swords, and extended to the production of tools, from plows with steel edges to chisels designed for cutting, showcasing the ingenuity and adaptability of ancient metalworkers in the face of material limitations. Forge welding is a versatile technique capable of joining a wide array of metals However, the process is not universally applicable. Metals like copper, bronze, and brass present significant challenges due to their propensity to absorb oxygen when heated, complicating the forge welding process. For these copper-based alloys, alternative methods such as coal welding, explosion welding, or other forms of pressure welding are typically more effective. 
In the context of iron or steel, the inclusion of even minor amounts of copper can have detrimental effects on the metal's forge welding capabilities. Titanium alloys, on the other hand, are well suited to forge welding. The nature of titanium to absorb oxygen when in a molten state means that the solid state the fusion bond created during forge welding often surpasses the strength of fusion welds where the metal is fully melted. This characteristic underscores the robustness of forge welding for certain applications. The mechanism of forge welding relies on solid state diffusion when joining similar materials, creating a bond that integrates the materials directly without the need for fillers or intermediary substances. When dealing with dissimilar materials, forge welding can induce the formation of a eutectic mixture at a lower melting point, facilitating the weld. This often results in a joint that exhibits strength superior to that of the base metals involved, illustrating the process's effectiveness in creating durable and reliable metal bonds. The practice of forge welding encompasses a variety of modes, each tailored to specific materials and applications, ranging from traditional methods to modern, automated techniques. The earliest and most traditional method is manual hammering, where metals are heated to the right temperature, coated with flux to prevent oxidation, and then physically hammered together. This technique requires skillful manipulation of the metal, including shaping the joint to allow excess flux to escape, ensuring a clean weld. The force of the hammer blows are moderated to prevent dispersing the flux prematurely, focusing instead on gradually fusing the metals. The advent of mechanical hammers marked a significant evolution in forge welding, introducing a more consistent and less labor-intensive approach. These hammers, once powered by water wheels and now by various modern means like compressed air or electricity, automate the hammering process, offering more precise control over the welding procedure. Similarly, die welding and roll welding represent advancements in the field, utilizing mechanical pressure to shape and fuse metals, catering to more complex and specific manufacturing needs. In the realm of modern manufacturing, forge welding has embraced automation, leveraging computers and hydraulic presses to facilitate the welding of a diverse array of alloys. This approach is particularly prevalent in the production of steel pipes and other items requiring high precision and consistency, where the metal is shaped and welded in a continuous process. Overall, the evolution of forge welding from manual hammering to sophisticated automated processes illustrates the field's adaptability and the continuous search for more efficient, reliable, and versatile welding methods.